My name is Samuel Mewitt and I was born in 1803, the eldest of 12 children born to John Mewitt and Elizabeth Waller. We were the fourth generation of Mewitts who were born and baptized in Willingdon, Sussex. Willingdon is a small village just north of the town of Eastbourne. The village was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1066 and in all probability predates this time. My siblings and I were baptized in the St. Mary the Virgin Parish Church in Willingdon and this church's origins date back to the late 1200s. There are many Mewitt graves in the churchyard. As I was the eldest son born to John and Elizabeth, I by tradition was first in line to inherit any land owned by my father. However, he was a general farm laborer and thus I also grew up not having the opportunity to purchase any land of my own. For some of my younger life I worked for Mr. Arthur Denman at Park Farm in Willingdon. The manor house at Park Farm was quite impressive and the farm contained many sheep and other animals. On the 4th of September 1828 I married Martha Balkum in the Willingdon St. Mary the Virgin Church. We had five children born and baptized in Willingdon. Robert 1829, Susanna 1831, Charlotte 1833, Jesse 1835 and Harriet 1837. Soon after the birth of Harriet, I saw a notice that South Australia were offering families from England a free passage to travel there by ship. There was also abundant land available for purchase. Owning my own land was something that I would have never be able to do in Sussex. In September 1838 we all travelled to London and on the, the 20th of September we departed on the ship Platina. We stopped en route for fresh food and water at the island of Madeira which is off the west coast of Africa and then again at Cape Town in South Africa. We travelled in steerage which was below the decks of the ship creating an extremely trying and gruelling voyage. Finally, after three and a half months of torture, we arrived at Port Misery, now called Port Adelaide, on the 9th of February 1839. Fortunately, our young children survived the journey without being extremely sick. Our initial accommodation was in a tent near the River Torrens in Adelaide. During this time, Elizabeth Sarah was born in August 1840. In 1841 I purchased five acres of land at Modbury near Dry Creek. Once again, our home was a tent. In June 1842, our seventh child, Thomas, was born at Modbury. By 1845 I was looking for better and more productive land near Kersbrook and Gumaraka. Although I didn't sell the Modbury land until 1846, our eighth child, Ruth, was born near Mount Gould, which is between the towns of Kersbrook and Foreston. Finally, after much searching, in late 1852 I purchased 80 acres of land about three miles north of Kersbrook. I named this property Park Farm. Meanwhile in January 1852, our ninth and last child, John, was born in Gumaraka. About this time, our life was very busy with clearing, developing, and planting fruit trees on the farm, and also the first three of our children who were born in Sussex, getting married. Robert married Eliza Rebecca Mansa in June 1852 in Gola. Two boys and six girls were born to Eliza and Robert. Susanna married David Parker in March 1851 at my residence in Gumaraka. Five boys and seven girls were born to Susanna and David. Charlotte married Thomas Barber in February 1852, also at my residence in Gumaraka. Fourteen children were born, eight sons and six daughters. By 1856 we had built our cottage at Park Farm, this being a painting of it. This same year we had two weddings at the farm. Son Jesse married Rhoda Giddings. They had four boys and five girls. And daughter Harriet married James Doman. Twelve children were born to Harriet and James, five sons and seven daughters. In 1860, also here at the farm, daughter Elizabeth Sarah married George Parker. They had three sons and eight daughters. By 1864 the orchard that we had planted was bearing fruit. In that year, we entered a 20-pound batch of our apples in the Mount Pleasant Agricultural Show. While they didn't win a prize, they rated a mention in the South Australian Advertiser. Between 1861 and 1880, our youngest children, Thomas, Ruth and John, also married, not here, but at different locations. Martha and I were the proud grandparents of 18 more grandchildren. 
It is with some pride that by the time that I celebrated my 80th birthday in 1883, Martha and I had 78 grandchildren and 40 great-grandchildren. With the assistance of a couple of our sons, our life continued at Park Farm where our main living was made from the sale of fruit, principally apples. Thank you for listening to the story of my life.